I'd like to call the order to Park and Rec Commission meeting of September 2021. Um, first of all, I believe we have a quorum right now, so we should be good to go. I need approval of the minutes of August 19th. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and second. Anybody questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Unfinished business. Resolution authorizing the transfer of park trust park fees for Regna Park Beach House renovations. I think Mike's going to handle this yep. one. I will take that one. Or, okay. I will get started and then we'll have the big screen up. All right. As we all know, the Regna Park Beach House has been with us since 1933. Over the years, the Beach House has had you know multiple additions. Uh, I guess there was a back game room, things like that, the restrooms or the changing rooms, things like that. Throughout the years, some of those pieces have been removed from the building, and today we have what we have. Um, the building is obviously in need of some major renovation. Um, the goal of the renovation project is exactly that. We would keep the center section of the building. We would remove kind of the back room and the two changing rooms on the ends and begin our renovation. The renovation would include a large multi-purpose or meeting room in the back, uh, new indoor restrooms, uh, new restrooms and family changing rooms. On the north end of the building, the one unique aspect of those restrooms, they would be at, uh, open to the outside. Um, so right now, if someone needs to use a restroom, it can only occur when the beach house is open or the swim season. Uh, we would also include um, amenities for the uh, lifeguards themselves, um, actually, a little bit of comfort while they get some downtime things like that um, including their own restroom which would be kind of nice um, when you're at work for sometimes eight nine hours or whatever it might be um, also an improved kitchen a huge kitchen the kitchen we have now is basically a microwave and a pizza oven and a refrigerator that's it i wouldn't call it a kitchen it's a storeroom where we make pizzas so the kitchen we would have in the new facility um, we could facilitate a lot of uh, many more concessions opportunities um, different food, things like that. So um, definitely a revenue source there. Then on the south end of the building, um, we would have um, an open air shelter and then two patios um, that would all be part of this project. So uh, we've been working with um, HGM. It's a, a local architecture firm. We've been working with them since 2012, 13, and 14 um, on these plans and we knew the way construction costs are these days and fluctuating costs for materials and construction costs and this project being over the winter, we had cost estimates, but we didn't know exactly where they would land. So when we did the bidding process, what we did was a base bid and this information, the hard copies are in front of you. We did a base bid and then five alternates after that, not knowing exactly where costs would land and our funding levels where we would be at. So. Uh, we went out for bid on September 14th. Uh, we received three bids for this project. Uh, the base bids themselves, uh, the costs ranged from $965,800 to $1,175,000. And that's, again, just for the base bid. And again, you got a paper copy in front of you. I got the, up on the big screen on the left-hand side um, what it would look like. Um, again, the base bid is the center section of the building, restrooms, the kitchen, the open air uh, shelter on the south end of the building, uh, the new restrooms, the new changing or family changing restrooms. On the screen or on your paper, you see the green, that is an actual ad alternate for the exterior restrooms. We would do the outside wall, we would just not have anything inside, no plumbing. Plumbing would be plumbed in to the floor, done. Sticking out of the walls, done. So just the base bid, Low base bid was $965,800, and it's just at center section of the building. Uh, the ad alternates, we had a wide range of costs associated with the different companies and different ad alternates. Creative Construction out of Monomany Falls has provided us uh, with a total project cost or low bid for everything, base bid and all the alternates of $1,889,800. Uh, that would be if we had funding for the entire project. Um, we did meet with Creative Contract, con Creative Construction. Um, they've done other projects here in West Bend, um, the Starbucks in town, they've done those. Um, they've done other projects in and around the city. The references all check out all that good stuff. Um, this following, there's coming Monday at Common Council, um, 
if everything goes through this evening, our department will recommend to award the base bid an alternate one to creative construction for a total project cost of $1,268,954. This would include a 3% contingency and construction administration fees. This project is scheduled to be completed by May 31st, 2022. So we should be open and operational by the swim season. We would still have some restoration, you know, landscape restoration, things like that around the building, probably some cleanup, things like that. But our plan is to be open and operational by the swim season 2022. So the city has gener generously received funding in the amount of $915,000 in committed donations. Additional donations have been pledged and will be forthcoming. This evening, we are requesting approval from the Park and Recreation Commission to transfer $300,000 from the Park Trust Park Fees Fund to a capital projects account to support the renovations to the beach house. Again, at this point in time, those renovations would be the base bid and first alternate. The first alternate is just the shell of that multi-purpose room. If we, weren't, if we wouldn't build that multi-purpose room or the shell of it, um, just imagine cutting the back of the building off, framing that in temporarily or for five years, 10 years, the building would aesthetically would not be very appealing, et cetera, et cetera. If we can get the base bit and alternate one, the shell done, um, we are still hoping that maybe our rec division might be able to run some rec programs and things like that. And there, it's not gonna be finished room, it's not gonna be a finished area, but we would certainly have occupancy where we could still maybe use it for things. Certainly not rentals, probably not a revenue source or anything like that, you know, for general facility rentals, but we could probably use it until we could finish it. So um, that's why staff is leaning towards or re recommending the base bid and phase one for this. Uh, park trust fees, or many times I refer to them as park <coughs> impact fees, can only be used for the new amenities on this project. We can't use park impact fees or park trust fees to renovate an existing building. Well, we are renovating an existing building here, so we can only use those fees for the new amenities. New amenities like the multi-purpose room, the shelter on the south end, the patios on the south end, the restrooms on the north end that are open up, that are open and available to um, the outside, and the large kitchen. Because again, like I'd mentioned, our kitchen we have now, it's a storage room with a piece of it. <coughs> so, um, so looking at the add alternate one, which is the construction of the exterior shell of the multi-purpose room, that cost is $246,000. We can use our impact fees <coughs> for that um, add, add alternate. The remaining $43,820 of the requested $300,000 transfer would support the construction of the covered patio on the south end of the building, the new kitchen, and the outside restrooms, getting those roughed in. So the regular beach house renovation is one of several pending projects that will utilize park trust fees in coming years. So I just wanted to take some time here this evening to kind of give everyone the big picture before we try to commit $300,000 towards one project, what else do we have pending? What other projects do we have coming down the road? So on the spreadsheet, if you look, start up on top, um, you can see in the very top row, um, uh, the Trails Edge development. We have received those, um, those park trust fees. Um, the park trust report that was before commission in June, we were at $491,000. Um, early next year, the brewery project, or what is being called the district, um, we will be receiving impact fees for that for 177 units for an estimated $350,000. And then we always have some um, individual general residential um, park trust fees that we received periodically throughout the year, just existing residential developments when houses are being constructed. I do know of two or three other residential developments, proposals that are out there. I don't know if they're ever going to come to fruition or when they might. Those are not included in this because those would only just be a guess or an estimate. These are kind of the guaranteed numbers. So after the brewery, um, after we received the brewery trust um, fund or trust fees, um, we were looking at um, the park trust account to be at 800, about $890,000. So pending projects right now before us, we have obviously the beach house this evening we were talking about. Parkside O, um, again, we have recently talked at times back and forth about Parkside O and developing that property. Um, this year going into next year, the city of West Bend is updating their comp plan 
which puts us at updating the park and open space plan in 2023. Um, part of that plan will be the development of Parkside Ohm. Um, between now and then, we will look at possibly installing some bike trails, some walking trails. We talked about um, a small neighborhood playground, a parking area, things like that, behind the ice skating rink near the church over there, things like that. Um, we, as part of our existing park and open space plan, it will be in a future park and open space plan, um, we are lacking a neighborhood park in that end of the city, basically, is what it comes down to. Um, we did walk the property, Parkside O, several weeks ago with several members of the Gears group, uh, the bike group out of um, Glacier Blue Hills, uh, to start kicking around some ideas. Uh, lots of good ideas, lots of enthusiasm. So we're going to keep doing that. We're going to keep just not formal planning, but we're going to keep planning for that property moving forward. And at some point in time, start bringing some of those ideas before the commission and start making some de some decisions with Parkside O. But again, we don't have a scheduled date for O, so that's why in the far right column for scheduled projects, uh, that line item or that column, that box is empty. All Abilities Playground, we are still working with Play by Design and the parent group. Um, we are one step closer after our meeting today to come up with a, I think the final design is about 99%. They're working on construction drawings, final cost, et cetera, et cetera. So again, we don't have a specific timeline on that project, so that's why, again, I left that box empty um, as far as any commitments. For Parkside O, I did throw in there in the spreadsheet $120,000 for some development as towards a neighborhood park. And again, the All Abilities, a cost estimate of $200,000 for the All Abilities Playground. Again, we don't have total for final cost estimates for either one of those, but I think those two numbers might be a good starting point. Riverwalk phase three and phase four. Um, the $180,000 you see before you and the $215,000. I put those in italic because we should have firm uh, pre-construction or pre-bid estimates in two to three weeks for that. But right now, SEH, our engineering firm, um, suggests that we could use those numbers um, for potential impact fees uh, for those projects. So that's kind of where we are up on top, what we have, what we will have soon as far as funding, some pending projects, and then down below, I just wanted to kind of put out their you know, future, future, future projects um, that would impact park impact fees. Riverwalk from Quas Creek to Riverside Park. Um, proje a project like that or Riverwalk from Quas Creek going east or any of those there would not impact what we're gonna have uh, out of that $890,000. Future residential development will need to pay for those future projects, especially like the Riverwalk from Quas Creek to Riverside Park. That residential, the future residential development would pay for, for that, new, that new trail section and things like that. So right now we've got pending projects, those four to Beach House, Parks at All, or I'm sorry, five, Beach House, Parks at All, All Abilities, and Riverwalk Phase One, sorry, Phase Three and Phase Four. Again, here are the beach house numbers. You have them before you. I would rather not go line by line. If anyone has any specific questions, please shout or as we go through this, please let me know. Again, the beach house project on the left, we kind of went through the different phases. One thing I forgot to mention, the drawing on the right does indicate um, a parking lot. That would have been the um, last <coughs> alternate new driveway parking lot. I believe the cost estimate for that was like 300 and some thousand dollars. That is not part of our, our budget at this point in time. Uh, would that parking lot be nice? Oh, absolutely. If the beach house was finished, 100% finished, and we're having parties, small weddings, family reunions, it would be very beneficial to have that 40-stall parking lot that close to the building to support the rentals and just general operational needs. <clears throat> I think we're all very aware that we could probably use some more parking on that end of the property in Regner Park. Beach House, just quick, some quick slides here. This is, again, what the beach house would look like if completely finished. Um, that we're, again, looking at the base bid and then that multi-purpose room on the west side of the building. All Abilities Playground, again, um, some minor changes to what you see here, but ultimately this is what we would be looking at. It would be an All Abilities Playground for all ages. Um, this would this would be or this will be a pretty exciting project. This is going to be, um, it's outstanding, really, is what this is shaping up to be. Riverwalk. Riverwalk, we have the different phases. I'll start on the left side, down to your Veterans Avenue, and 
the bridge down on the south end, I'll say magenta or the purple, that is phase one and phase two of the Riverwalk development. Um, impact fees will not and cannot be used for that phase of development because it's renovating an existing Riverwalk section. Phase three, which is the green, and then phase four, which is the red and blue north of Washington Street, we can use impact fees for new elements or new items um, associated with, with, those, um, with those phases of the Riverwalk. If you look at the lower picture, you can kind of see the, the, blight, the bright blue. Um, that's a new Riverwalk running through. Impact fees would be able to use, we'd be able to use impact fees for the new Riverwalk, the canoe launch or kayak launch, and the underpass under Washington Street. <clears throat> Excuse me. So those would be the new amenities for phase three. Phase four, which again is um, from the place of origin or the We Energy substation north all the way to Main Street. Um, renovating the existing Riverwalk, we cannot use impact fees for, but the new seat areas up on the north end, which is the um, overview on the left, uh, we can use impact fees for those features and also the dam area. Everyone's got a hard copy in front of them of what the dam area might look like. Today it's a bunch of green cyclone fence, an old beat up garbage can, and a bridge to get you over there. It's not, I'll be honest with you, it's functional, but nothing real exciting. And also if we're gonna build, build a $35 million residential development called the district or where the brewery is, we should probably dress up our backyard also. So on this drawing, you can kind of see, I mean, we have the existing bridge and that area out there. Um, Cindy's done her magic along with a survey team and we can make that area out there handicap accessible. And to me, that's pretty exciting stuff. Um, we will re, we'll utilize the existing bridge. Uh, we'll make some modifications to it. On the dam side of it, we'll put a ramp in, some stairs in, but we can make that ADA compliant. Uh, we would have a small patio area going out to the north, or the water's edge, I'll say the north edge. Um, the cyclone fence that is there, we would remove that, put the river, our standard river walk fence that we're, we're using downtown there. Some seat areas, some steps going down to the river, um, renovate that area so it can match the $35 million residential development and the rest of the river walk sections we are doing. So, um, so those features, again, or the features like the dam features would be uh, applicable for the impact fees in the future. And that would probably be coming back to commission yet this year or early next year because we are looking at going to, for permission to bid for that project this calendar year. And we are looking at doing phase three, phase two, three, and four as one contract, one large contract. So those discussions will be coming before the commission and the common council within the next couple of months. So that's kind of the big picture for impact fees in the future, other projects that we have pending, costs associated with those other projects. So um, as we all know, Westman is very fortunate to have received generous financial support for the Beach House project, the renovation of Carl Coast Field, the transformation of all of Regner Park, the urban development downtown um, in supporting the Riverwalk and many other community projects. So uh, I'd just like to say thank you to all those individuals, organizations, you know, thank you for supporting us and specifically this evening the Beach House renovation, $915,000 is very, very impressive. Um, so our request this evening is that um, or we are requesting approval to transfer $300,000 from park trust fees to a capital projects account to support the renovation of the beach house. And I would be happy to take any questions. A couple of quick things, Mike. Um, <clears throat> first of all, thanks again. I agree with you uh, for the city, Russ Bend, the residents and the businesses for donating this money. It's still incredible. When you bring these numbers up, these aren't little numbers, so that's outstanding. Um, my question is with the brewery money, when do you actually, with the units, do they have to sell a unit to get the money, the f impact fee, or do they upfront pay for it at the end of it? What does that work? They get their occupancy, it'll be a lump sum. It'll all at one time. Once they get occupancy, it pays yep. for all the units, yep. okay. Just like an example, if you look at the very top on this, Trail's Edge, $249,000, yep. that same scenario, lump sum. Lump sum. Yep. And w what are they thinking? A year from now, that'll be? We need, so that phase four uh, Riverwalk section, 
not the dam area, but the Riverwalk ex itself. Mm -hmm. um, deadline is June 1 of next year to be done. Oh, okay. And Great. then the dam area, it's all going to be part of the one project, but June 1 to push the contractor to get that done, because we have to. It's just we, we're not going to delay in our construction. Um, they're going to have the, the brewery finished. We, we need to also be finished. The dam area, we're going to give the contractor until August 1st to finish that, because it's not directly behind the brewery. It's not directly tied to their development. But okay. when we're talking about building a river walk in them, we need to marry both projects at the same time, elevation, steps, walkways, lighting. So that's why we are going to push hard for June 1. Okay. Yep. So by early next summer, it should be there? And yep. Okay. Usable. And it's going to be concrete, okay. not asphalt. Okay. So. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions for Mike? Uh, you say there's other commitments that you think they're come, going to come through? Because there's still 53,000? Right. So. There, yes. Okay. Great question. I should have addressed that. Thanks, Mike. So we have the $915,000 in donations at this point in time, plus the $300,000 in impact fees. Um, we are very confident. We're going to still continue to fundraise, and we're very confident that we will, we will cover that, that $53,000. For us right now, um, We've been telling our donors that we're gonna get this project going now, and we wanna get it done and completed by next year, so we need to follow through on that commitment. Also, our costs associated with this project over the winter months, the contractors have told us they're gonna give us, you know, we're gonna get lower bids for this project to get the work done over the winter time. So we don't wanna drag this out until starting it fall of 2022, we wanna get started now, so. Um, we are, we are confident in that extra $50,000 will come through. So, so transferring $300,000 is enough, we wouldn't have to... We At this point in time, um, we are very confident $300,000 plus the donations and future donations. We should hit that mark. Um, I'd move to approve the $300,000 transfer. I'll second it. Okay, we've got a motion. we got a second. Any other comments? On it? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Okay, next on the agenda, we have Michael Day, an Eagle Scout project, bike repair station at Glacial Blue Hills Recreation Area. Hi, my name is Michael Day, and I am from Troop 762 out of West Bend. Uh, I am a senior at Slinger High School and I am starting my Eagle Scout project. I am working with uh, the Gears organization in Glacial Blue to install a bike repair station there. And I'm planning to uh, set concrete in the coming weeks for that and install it later in December. Uh, any questions? Is this yes. gonna be up all the time then? Or is it just a seasonal thing, or what? I'm sorry. The station is it is it permanent? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, there's similar. Um, uh, we have similar bike repair stands at uh, Moraine Park, and uh, planned for one at the um, trailhead on uh, Rusco Road as well. Yep. They're they're very sturdy units. They're built for outdoor stainless steel, and you know, and built for abuse. Hmm. We also have one at Riverside Park on the north side, along the Riverwalk over there. Well, one thing the city does appreciate, I mean, the Eagle, Eagle Scout projects are outstanding. I mean, all over the city every year, they come up with a couple things, and it, it really does help. So mm -hmm. I commend you like you wouldn't believe. So um, do we need a motion to approve this? Yep, I believe, we, right? we get a motion. Yep. Okay, we got a motion? In? Yeah, move to approve. We have motion approved. Second. A second. Any other questions for Michael? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Keep up the good work, okay? Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is winter spring program fees. Nick, maybe? Yep, you bet. So these are the programs that will take place winter spring of 2022, after the first of the year. The Some of the f increased fees that you see are the majority predicated on the increase of seasonal staff wage, wages that will need to take place, um, specifically with swim lessons, some of our instructional program programs, with the exception of archery. Archery, um, the increase is needed for some equipment needs. 
We have some bows that are over 10 years old. We had to replace some of them this summer to get us through the summer lessons and then going into the fall lessons. And of course, we have the reoccurring expenses of arrows. Um, we have to evaluate some of our targets as well um, that need either repairs or simply need new targets after our fall program. So, so that's the increase, obviously, to help offset some of that expenses. We need additional revenue uh, to come in from uh, that program. As far as the contracted programs or partnership programs, you can see the offerings that we'll have um, again into 2022, but there's no significant changes with those programs as far as how fees, how they're structured. And then LLC programs, you can see down at the end as well, um, no changes there for the offerings. Any questions for Nick? How are we with instructors? Uh, good, yeah, you know, as far as the current programs we're offering now, yeah, we have you know, instructors. Obviously, we'll need to get additional instructors, specifically swim lessons um, mm -hmm. going into the new year. Um, but currently, we're, we're sitting good with instructors. Oh, good. We got, uh, we got uh, for flag football, we got um, some volunteers with the West football. Um, to help us out too. So we're obviously using some volunteers where we can as well in some areas. Good. Any other questions for Nick? Okay. Do you got a motion to approve the fees? I'll move to approve. Second. We have a motion, a second. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Nick. Yep. Uh, now we have a mess of donations. Who's taking care of that? I will start and then turn it over to Carolyn and then Nick. Okay. Uh, my first donation is um, from the West Bend, Dis West Bend Disc Golf Club um, in the amount of $300 to help support the disc golf operations over at Riverside Park. Uh, my second donation is from Mr. Mike Hartwell of the set for $784 to support our Special Olympics operations. Uh, my next uh, donation is for the West Bend Nitro Fast Pitch Organization. They play their games and practice out at Quas Creek Park. Uh, this donation is for $2,000 to help support the installation of the new scoreboard uh, at field number one at Quas Creek Park. Earlier this year, the Rotaries teamed up and we replaced uh, the scoreboard on field two out there. So um, we're kind of picking away at them. We're pretty happy to get some of that old equipment out of there. And my last donation is from Sarah Birkin. Uh, this is for a picnic table for the Lackland Rand Conservancy niche in the lower classroom for $250. Mike, I think you got a picture if you yes, don't mind. Yes, we do. Uh, it's Sarah. outstanding. Yep, so. nope. Sarah did a great job. Uh, she had some ideas. Her and her father worked with Courtney, and that will be a new addition to that classroom in the basement there. Outstanding. Yes. Quite a carpenter. Yes, wow. <laughs> so. Carolyn? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Great. So the donations I have for tonight include Horicon Bank. They are donation uh, $7,500 towards the cost of the 4th of July fireworks at Riverside Park. Uh, Mike Hartwell, uh, a donation for $825 designated for the All Abilities Playground. Um, and Roseanne Mosh, uh, has an individual donation also of $800, also designated for the All Abilities Playground. And the All Abilities Playground uh, parent group has kicked off their uh, fence picket uh, fundraiser. Uh, uh, donors uh, purchase a fence picket, basically, or have a donation for a fence picket of $50 each. And the total of those donations have come to $4,150. Uh, so we thank all those individual donors. Uh, in miscellaneous donations for the All Abilities Playground additionally is $773.78. So good uh, grassroots effort there to raise funds for the playground. My first donation is courtesy of the West Bend Friends of Parks and Recreation in support of the Youth Flag Football League in the amount of $942. Next donation is for the Regner Park Beach House donation for the, um, it's a beach bum donation. It's a $1,000 each from Jim White, Leanne and Paul Becht. And again, in the amount of 1,000 uh, for each of them, total of $2,000. 
Next donation is in support of the Regner Beach House renovation from the Walmart Corporation in the amount of $2,500. Next donation is also in support of the Regner Beach House renovation from National Exchange Bank in the amount of $15,000. Next donation is for the Regner Beach House renovation from Robert Ram. Saul and Beth Ann Ramsthal in the amount of $50,000. Next donation is in support of the Regner Beach House renovation from Glacier Hills Credit Union in the amount of $2,500. Thank you. That concludes. Well, again, it shows West Bend City giving. I mean, it's outstanding when you see these numbers. It really, really is. So um, mm -hmm. thanks again, everybody out there that donates their time, effort, and money. Uh, do we need a motion to approve, I believe it, the donations? Move to approve. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, reports. Um, <clears throat> Uh, chairman, I guess that's me. Um, just all, all in all, I just want to say how a wonderful summer season we had this year. You know, after going through last year, the use of Regner Park and everybody coming together, and um, it really was, you saw people out having a good time. So thanks again for everybody involved from the every employee in the city and everybody has time and effort to help out. I really appreciate it. So thank you. Yep. Thanks, Mike. Um, and also big thanks to all the volunteers out there. We wouldn't be able to do a lot of the special events, things like that. True. Friends of Parks and friends over at Lake Loran, everything else. So yep. Very no. true. Very true. Yep. It was, it was a great summer events, programs, everything. We were full. It's great. It's all good. Uh, Mike Weston, Secretary. Uh, since Courtney's out here, I'll plug her uh, luminary walk. The fall luminary walk is going to be October 16th from 6 to 9. That's a free event. If you haven't seen that, that's a great event. And then I'm going to plug the Rotary right away. The, uh, the uh, Enchantment in the Park starts the day after Thanksgiving until Christmas Eve. And I understand they are going to pay for the uh, remainder of that concrete behind the Chairman is going to financially support the concrete behind the new Great. grandstand at Carl Cuss. So it'll be the Friends of Parks, uh, some operating funds, city operating funds, and then Enchantment in the Park, and then general donations with the Cuss. So it's enough Cuss to cover program. it then? So yep. that'll get taken yep. care of? Yep. Actually, Monday, Tuesday, and next week, staff will be removing the concrete asphalt, and then Duquesne Concrete is going to be coming in here in the next couple of weeks, finish it up. Once that's done, we will finish restoration. So That'll look nice. Yeah, that'll it'll be... It'll be done correctly. It'll be done nice. Yep. Yes. It'll be a great entrance into the park and a great surround for the for the new grandstand and the stadium. Cool. I'm glad you're doing it the right way too. I'm yeah. glad you're not skimping or whatever. It's so. all patched. And yeah, everything. exactly. So great. So we've been kind of holding off on hoping we can do the things the right way over there. So <laughs> thanks. Yep. Thanks again. Yes. That's all I got. All right. Who's Cindy today, park manager? Uh, we will skip Cindy. Okay. Um, Cindy actually said since the tour. The projects are still out there. They're still pending. Not she. Didn't, she did enough talking. She, she did. She so did. She did a great job. But um, right. Courtney. Courtney uh, might kind of nail the special event. Uh, so and then tourism event coordinator. I will grab that one for Jackie for the Pumpkin Patch Drive, October twenty third. Again, that'll be down on Veterans Avenue, starting at six p.m. Um, next week, Jackie and Dan will be picking up. I don't know, like. 4,000 pumpkins or 500 pumpkins or whatever it is. So if anyone wants any pumpkins or there's organizations that want pumpkins, please contact our office. Um, she already has a full list of different places. They're going to be dropping 40 off here, 50 off there. So the enthusiasm was there last year. It seems that the, the event will grow again this year. So that's great. And again, he, a wonderful partners, Fleet and Farm, they're supplying us pumpkins for free. So cool. it's great. Cool. Very cool. <laughs> okay, Nick. Recreation Supervisor. You bet. Some of the programs we have going on right now is Tiny Tot Tumbling and Junior Gymnastics. Those classes take place on Saturday mornings at the Library Rec Center. We also have flag football on Saturday mornings. It takes place at Quaz Creek on Diamond One. We play in the outfields. We have fall archery lessons over at the Municipal Archery Range, also on Saturday mornings. Our dance classes start it on Tuesday, September 21st, and Wednesday the 22nd that of course takes place in the dance studio at the Library Rec Center. 
We have um, Adult Women's Volleyball League back online. We're going to use um, the gymnasium at the Boys and Girls Club. That will start November 4th, so we're registration is ongoing uh, for that league. Some of the fall partnership programs that we have that will start actually next week is music lessons and adult ballroom dance. Um, youth and adult judo classes start it back up at the university um, as of September 13th. And group fitness classes, women's health and fitness, cardio dance and pound has been ongoing. Good. Any questions for Nick at all? Um, one thing here, I don't know if anybody, or maybe Mike's going to mention that, activities booklet is out for 2021, the fall. Mm -hmm. um, it's online too, I take it, is that correct? Correct. Where would I go if I want to find this online? Oh, the website's right there on the cover. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So anyway, people. Just Google it, Mike. Just Google it. What's that? Just Google it. <laughs> Google, okay, I'll Google it. Follow right. it on Facebook, Mike. <laughs> Facebook, what's that? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, I think Michael handled the last two, Parks Supervisor and Director. Uh, a couple quick items for Dan and the guys out at the shop. Uh, they finished up our fall stump grinding already for street trees and some park trees, things like that. Uh, they have some projects out at the Conservancy that they're gonna be starting next week. Working hand, -to -hand, hand in hand with the volunteers out there. Um, we're gonna start stoning the Lake Loop Trail. Um, one of our goals out there is and with throughout our park system is provide more ADA compliant facilities. Um, so we want to stone that trail. It's going to be great for the luminary walk this year. Uh, all those tree roots become trip hazards in the dark and things like that. But um, we're also hoping to get a new trail kind of behind the Marin Center. We can get that sloped down to ADA compliant. So we're, we're trying to incorporate more of that dam project like we'd mentioned this evening. So um, certainly ADA compliance has always been a priority, but it, that's gotten a little bit higher top of the list. Um, even our new playground we're looking at for next year, Bicentennial Park, ensuring that that will be uh, ADA compliant also. So um, yeah, the park and forestry guys are definitely busy. People think fall, it's nice and quiet. There are things to do, list grows all the time. So that's good though. So to make it ADA compliant, do you have to do that thing where you have different levels to get up and For down? that trail, Mike, um, because of the distance we have there, we don't have to put any landings in. So we're very fortunate that way. Um, but no, it's um, we've got enough distance there, uh, enough length there, that we can cut that slope down and match those elevations, top to bottom. Yeah, because so. I get slippery in the winter. Yeah. yeah, it does. I mean, what we have there right now is it's way too steep. But we've been, kick, I'll say, kicking around this idea, talking about this new trail for several <laughs> since the Marine Center was built, really. And um, no, it we can use it for general trail use in the summertime. Um, utility vehicles, snowshoeing, the luminary walk, it's, yeah, it'll be great once we can get that cut in. It'll look like a big scar at first because everything's green and it's natural and it's going to be gravel, it's an esker, it's glacial till is what we're going to be cutting into, so. Um, but no, once it's done and usable, it's going to be, be good. yeah, be, be pretty good, so. Excellent. Okay, Director Mike, anything? I'm going to let Carolyn start with my report. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just an update what's happening in the office. Uh, we talked about how busy our summer was. Our summer was super busy with a lot of rentals. Um, we actually already met our revenue projections for revenue for the facilities for this year already, which is great. Everyone came out of the woodwork and rented a facility for their uh, graduation parties, anniversary parties, the parties that they didn't have in 2020. They had this summer. We're still busy with those this fall. Um, so Tanya Anderson and I have been uh, talking with a lot of residents about that tree, uh, a tree surety program. We're collecting all of those uh, orders for trees for street tree plantings for next spring. Cindy has been doing a fantastic job with that too, um, getting all those tree orders in. Um, so um, the fall booklet, as we talked about, uh, helping residents with uh, uh, booking booking their kiddos for all the all the cool um, classes that that Nick has scheduled in there and we're working on the winter and spring booklet right now to putting that together that'll get published um, in uh, in November uh, we will uh, uh, start registering for that November 30th 
the big thing on our list, though, for Tiny and I is, is learning our new software program. Um, we have been watching tutorials. We've been watching uh, videos and online also with some uh, training programs for our new software that's going to be installed. It's going to go live on October 25th, so that's coming up pretty, pretty soon. It's a new browser-based software. I'd mentioned it before. Uh, completely new architecture. Uh, it's going to be really good experience for our customers to use online uh, and um, hopefully that will uh, be again a good experience for them all of the age date time um, restrictions and rules and fees is completely different so Tony and I will be working with VSI to get our feet on the ground understand how to use those processes try to learn it really well so that we can do the changes ourselves and not have to have that um, support because it's everything's on the clock for them now with uh, with um, customer support. It's all uh, built hourly. Um, so wish us well on that. <laughs> and uh, uh, we're hoping to, to get that up and running. Uh, it'll be up for the fall for that winter spring booklet registration. And then of course getting all of our facilities ready, getting all the fees and pictures. The new system is going to be more uh, media rich. We'll be able to link videos. People will be able to see what they're, what they're renting. Um, before before they get it, and uh, real real excited for that change. It'll be it'll be a great great update. Cool. Uh, a couple quick items: uh, sculpture updates. In January of this year, the commission approved uh, moving the tilted donut from the River Shores area up to North Main Street uh, at the Fireman's Bluff. Uh, the tilted donut will not be relocated up there. The tilted donut will remain in place. Uh, it can't be moved anymore. So. Um, <laughs> The bird sculpture, uh, October, uh, the bird sculpture should be installed uh, along the Riverwalk, along Veterans Avenue. Um, we have met several times with the sculpture committee and their contractors, things like that. Now it's just getting everyone in line and schedules going, and that should be installed in October. They are pretty excited about it. At the April commission meeting, the commission approved two sculptures at the Barton Garden. Those have been installed. Um, our staff worked with the uh, Historic Barton Business Association. Again, a great volunteer group up there, started the new landscape beds, things like that. Our staff went in, um, poured some concrete slabs for future benches and uh, footings for those sculptures, things like that. So I just wanted to kind of give the commission an update on some of those uh, items that uh, passed, passed before the commission this year. And my last um, announcement for the evening is the score of the West Bend East West JV football game is 28 to nothing East at half. Thank you. Boo. No, Boo. no, no. As no, a West no. graduate. Boo. No, 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 no. no. So. Thanks, Mike. No, thank you. Yeah. Is there any else? anything else for the good of the Park and Rec Commission tonight? Nothing? Meeting adjourned. <laughs>